During the month of September, we at the Movie Jerks like to focus on science fiction films. Every year, we force ourselves to expand our knowledge and watch 30 sci-fi films that we have never seen before. This does cause us to see a lot of poor and low-quality films. Yet, every now and then, we do stumble upon a gem that seems to have been either misunderstood, poorly marketed, or just missed upon release. So in this video, we would like to focus on a few subgenres in the science fiction category. Some of the films that made those subgenres popular. And bring focus to a few films that we believe deserve more attention. If we're looking at science fiction subgenres, I think it's safe to start off with one of the most popular, which is space exploration. We as humans have always been curious-minded beings. We enjoy the adventure of exploring the great infinite degree of space and the great unknown. American astronaut Gene Sermon said it best when he said, Curiosity is the essence of our existence. And while most of us are not child-minded millionaires that can afford to put together a team of experts and travel out in space, we can still settle for exploring through the channels of cinema. Countless of films and television shows have been dedicated to showing us the possibilities of what we may expect to see in the great beyond. We love these films because they help us understand ourselves and perhaps even better understanding of our existence. Some of the great films focused on space exploration are films like Contact, Interstellar, and of course this category wouldn't be anything without Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. But the film that we believe deserves more attention is a small film with big ideas and an enormous heart called Clara. Clara is about a rebellious scientist who hires a quirky assistant in order to help him discover a new planet and perhaps signs of life in outer space. As the two butt heads at first, they soon gain respect for each other and allow their inner secrets to arise and display the scientist's emotional motivation. With academic yet level speaking dialogue, beautifully researched and examined methods of analyzing data, combined with great chemistry between the two leads, Clara is undeniably one of the best science fiction romances to come around. It explains enough to keep you understanding the events. It doesn't over explain to either undercut the romance or insult the viewer. And boy, do we love that gut punch of an emotional ending. If you can't find Clara out there on streaming sites, hunt it down. This is a film worth exploring. Of course, we couldn't have space exploration without advancements in technology. Films taking place in the future often require an advancement in the tools and machinery that are shown on screen. This allows some great explorations on how we adapt and how we are affected by our devices in our lives. A lot of films that deal with exploration of technology are usually attached to mad scientists, ignoring the laws of nature, all in the pursuit of science. We see this in The Fly and the Jurassic Park series. We often see gadgets that are so powerful that the government wants to either shut them down or take advantage of them. Hey, Kate, no, no, come on, man. You get a, a series four the atomizer, I, I get a little, little midget cricket. Look, oh, yeah. I feel like I'm gonna break this damn thing. Like the Sentinel robots in Short Circuit or Iron Giant. And sometimes the advancement of machinery and our devices may tell us more about ourselves than we are willing to find out. We see this in the emotional film Her and the adorable Robot and Frank. But in this category, the film that we believe deserves a lot more attention is the complex and yet wildly unique LX2048. This indie film delivers a unique take on the future run by VR units. We see this future through the eyes of Adam Bird a depressed, separated father 
who has been diagnosed with a failing heart. When he realizes his time is running out, he works at trying to adapt his employment to switch from VR to the chip, the newest technology that is set to replace VR. And as the world around him attempts to have him give into his mental and health protocols, all the attempts work against his desire to make something of himself to protect his family before he passes on. This indie film delivers a unique take on the future run by VR units. Guy Moshe has written and directed one clever and imaginative science fiction dark comedy, deeply analyzing what it means to be in control of one's own identity and taking ownership of one's own self. The film's plot and creative structure comes from someone who obviously has a grasp of theater writing. When the film dives right into a famous Shakespeare soliloquy, it is evident that there is a sharp and methodical mind assembling this play-like film. The attention to dialogue and themes demonstrate a true love of composition. There are so many creative ideas layered on top of each other that we would be giving it a disservice by trying to explain the plot and not allowing it to unfold as someone's watching it. This is the type of science fiction storytelling that we love. It is a rare form of sophisticated cinema that I hope does not get lost in the midst of so many movie titles. Human Upgrades Let's take a look at some of the advancements in the medical field. These are the gadgets and devices that enhance our abilities as humans to give us more strength, give us more speed, and that which also enhances our intellectual capabilities. These films like to analyze the physical limitations and biological wonders of our physics, show the importance of our limitations, and analyze the extensions of our abilities. These are the films of body modifications, it works! exoskeletons, and cyborgs. We often see these enhancements in action films to exaggerate the strength, speed, and agility of our heroes and villains sometimes a little too much. Some of the more popular films that talk about human upgrades are Upgrade. <laughs> Cyborg. And one of our favorite films of all time, Robocop. Your move, creep. But the human upgrade film that we think deserves more attention is 1997's straight-to-video action comedy, Drive. Drive is a simple story about Toby, a prototype-enhanced human, on the run from Chinese hired hitmen looking to retrieve their experiment. He accidentally teams up with Malik, a down-on-his-luck family man whose life is now on the line. Drive obviously comes from a school of Jackie Chan and Sammo Hung early years action films, with our hero always against the odds, using his environment as his weapon, and getting some of the sickest stunts on film. Mark Dacascos performing a ton of his own stunts, making the action seem more authentic. To allow this type of action to fit into the story, that's where the enhancement fit in. The film mainly sticks with moves and agilities that can be performed by a man without making him something superhuman. The problem with most action films nowadays is that the action hero survives everything. Yet in Drive, there's always a sense of danger, especially when it comes to Toby, his sidekick, played with great comical timing by Kadeem Hardison. Time to blow. Time to blow? This is an insane, fast-paced, and very flashy action, created with the sole purpose of entertaining. A rare gem of an action film that I wish more films would emulate. Or at least borrow from Jackie Chan and Sammo Hung. Oh, maybe we should go inside. But Marge, that little guy hasn't done anything yet. 
Look at him. He's gonna do something, and you know it's gonna be good. Uh. And as we switch from technology, we go into another category that sometimes is the opposite of technical advances, and that is post-apocalyptic films. In this category, we look at films that explore a world in which Earth's or other planets civilization is collapsing or has collapsed. These films often focus on the psychology of survivors, the way to keep the human race alive and together as one. It may also include the existence of a pre-catastrophe civilization that has now been mythologized. Post-apocalyptic stories often take place in a non-technological future, or a world where only scattered elements of society and technology remain. Films that fall into this category are the Mad Max series, I Am Legend, Waterworld, and of course we have to mention Tarkovsky's undeniable stalker. But the one film that we think deserves more attention is more of a sport film, known in some countries as the Salute of the Jugger, but in Canada we know it as The Blood of Heroes. This film gives a quick explanation that after some devastating wars, the world lost its history and any connection prior to the 20th century. Without going into some exposition dumps, the film just allows us to understand how things work as it unfolds before us. In this barren world, the only form of entertainment is a sport called the game. The game consists of two teams of weapon-wielding warriors. Their task is to prevent an unarmed player named the Quick from carrying a dog skull from one end of the field to the next. Surface teams living in poverty may get a rare opportunity to challenge the league. A team of champions owned by a rich society living in an underground city just so they can experience for a couple of days a little sense of luxury. The challenge is so unevenly matched that it doesn't even attract viewers anymore. However, when a team led by a one-eyed captain and a small peasant girl get a shot, we soon learn that the simple task of carrying an inanimate object from one point of the room to the other may have more significance than we can know. By eliminating the history, the events creating this world, and the talks to change the world for the better, this post-apocalyptic film demonstrates the importance of a sport to everyone, whether it's the owners or the working class. It chips away at all the connecting details that show us the very essence and power of motivation and inspiration that a lot of sport films don't quite get right. Time Loops There are two forms of time looping in films. The first is when a time traveler travels to the past or future where they themselves already exist. Who's that, eh? In this method, there are multiple versions of the same person in the same time zone. Good movies that use this version are films like Back to the Future 2, Time Cop, and Looper. Man. So do you know what's going to happen? You done all this already? As me? I don't want to talk about time travel shit. Because if we start talking about it, then we're going to be here all day talking about it, making diagrams with straws. The second version is when a specific period of time keeps repeating itself over and over again, and one or multiple people are aware of this repeat. This method is good for all genres because it is character focused. This is a structure that has a character change within themselves in a world that is literally unchanging. Made popular by Bill Murray's excellent comedy about having to renew the same day over and over again in Groundhog Day. Other popular films that use this method are films like Palm Springs, Happy Death Day,
and boss level. As many times as I've seen this happen to my apartment, I still can't help but think, fuck, man, this is a lease. In the movie that uses time loops that we believe deserves more attention is The Repeaters. Three recovering addicts find themselves repeating the same day over and over after they all get electrocuted during a storm. At first they find enjoyment in the knowledge that the next day starts anew. However, when Mike's antics start to become dangerous and violent, Kyle and Sonya decide they need to stop Mike before he causes more pain. The only problem is, Mike is the first to wake up each morning, giving him plenty of time to take control. The time loop in this film works perfectly as a suspenseful gimmick, but also nicely as a metaphor for the fears and pain that people experience while setting up a routine to replace an addiction. It's suspenseful, shocking, and has plenty of surprises along the way. Repeaters, unlike its title, does not feel like it's repeating common gimmicks. And there you have it, five science fiction films that we believe deserve more attention. If there are some science fiction movies that you think deserve more attention, feel free to let us know in the comment section below. And give us a thumbs up for this video if you liked it, that way we can do more videos of the same nature. And for more information about The Movie Jerks, you can go to www.themoviejerks.ca.